Hi folks, it's me, Artie. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do a book review. I just finished Stephen King's Dead Zone like an hour ago. So, cheers, Stephen. Oh, I thought it was okay. Man, uh, it's weird how Stephen King is like the, the king of horror, but I'm just realizing a lot of his books aren't horror. I mean, definitely Salem's Lot is, which I like this better than Salem's Lot. I thought Salem's Lot was boring. Um, Pet Cemetery, I remember liking it a lot. That's definitely it's horror. Like it. <clears throat> the Stand, I guess. Anyway, Dead Zone. I mean, I only read it because I saw the movie. Um, I think the movie's really good. I think Chris, Christopher Walken uh, did a, a spectacular job as John Smith. And King is really good at creating a, a likable character you care about. And this has some really good parts. But it's just how King... Like... I think, yeah, in this, like, someone, uh, John, Johnny's old, old girl, Sarah, like, she walks to her front door, and he describes, like, uh, like, the dust motes in the air, and, like, uh, the leaf blowing, it's like a, he'll, he'll write, like, a paragraph or two describing someone walking to their front door, and, he's, he's, uh, I mean, he's not that great of a writer, like, every word he writes is in, like, just like amazing. The part where he touches his doctor and he realizes how the doctor's mom must survive, that like made me tear up a little when, when the doctor calls her. Says he calls her and like he hangs up just to know that she was alive. That was very touching. The stuff with Frank Dodd, that was that was like the best part. I thought if it would have just been that, <laughs> like a hundred pages shorter, and Stephen King he just doesn't dwell on like the sick, disgusting graphic gore, or violence, or even horror. You know, like Layman does, it's in his books, but it's not the focus. I don't know what the focus of his books are. I keep I'm, anyone that I know that will talk to me. <laughs> Like my friend Gary, uh, hey Gary, my friend Beer, like I told him that, man, this is just like, it's like a Twilight Zone episode stretched out. This could have been a short story. I mean, it's only 400 pages, but <coughs> the type is really small. And uh, like I said, Stephen King just rambles on and on and on. The part where the Stilson, where he kicks a dog to death, that was pretty ugly. Uh, the Frank Dodd, the, his murders are gruesome, but they don't really dwell on him. You don't get into his head too much. You kind of forget about him and Stilson after a while. But Johnny was a great character. Very uh, sympathetic and like more real to me than any book I've read. Uh, like, I don't know, these terrible books still. Even the ones that were okay. Like, now if a book is, is sucking... Like 10 pages, I, I'll, I won't read it anymore. The last book off the top of my head that I really liked the character was The Island of the Blue Dolphin. Have you ever read that? That book was great. Like, I remember I got it because of the cover, and uh, so this looks boring as fuck. But that is one of the best books I've read in the last couple of years, actually. So that, that stuff, like reading that gives me hope. Like, maybe one of these books will be good. I know I've said that. Stephen King Dead Zone, I'm glad I read it. I'll give it a, a good solid three out of five Manos Hands of Fate because like, his characterization is really good. It was an interesting story. It's just not horror. And I'm going to revisit, I'm going to try to revisit King because I remember really liking uh, Pet Cemetery, It, The Stand, and the Dark Tower series. I really liked those, but I'm just a moron that, that was, a, yeah, it was just an idiot that just... When I started reading, I was like, oh, King's awesome. Let me read it. And I was just bought into the hype that he's great. He's okay. I, mean, I really I really do like him, but... I 
I did like the library policeman. Dead Zone, I mean, that's one of his earlier books, but that's his best stuff, right? So, and it was cool, because I could, I could see Christopher Walken as Johnny. Oh, yeah, and like, uh, it's like in every book, they can't, you know, translate most of the stuff from the page, but he has a nightmare of a, of a tiger stalking through, a, like, a ap apocalyptic wasteland, like, laughing and all. That's cool image, but it's like, it's like that one sentence. He doesn't really dwell on it. <clears throat> or like in the movie, it was like a kid that like was ice skating or playing ice hockey and he falls through the ice or like a bunch of his friends fall through the ice, I think. And this, it's it's like a, a graduation, like high school graduation party. <clears throat> the kid that he was tutoring and it's a, like they have a graduation party at this restaurant and the restaurant catches on fire and like, 40, 50, 60 kids die in it. So that was, the stakes are higher than that. Um, Frank Dodd's mother in the book, in the movie, like, she starts shooting at them, right? And they have to shoot her. That wasn't in here. That was a good part. Cronenberg's a really good director, so he made, I think he made the book better. But he did leave stuff out. But, I mean, whatever. I wouldn't read it again, like, I would read, I think I'll read The Stand again, read Cujo. But I, I did like it. I'm just glad I finally read it, like, you know. Uh, remember, I, I never finished Tommy Knockers. I think I read Eyes of the Dragon. I never read Misery. I like his Bachman books, though. I think it, I, his Bachman books are better. Uh, Skeleton Crew, I read a lot of, but I don't remember. I never read Cycle of the Werewolf. I read Pet Cemetery. I read Christine. I read Different Seasons. I read Cujo. I didn't finish Firestarter. Salem's Lot, I, I did not like Salem's Lot, man. I stand, I remember liking. I haven't read Thinner. I read The Running Man. I haven't read Carrie, and I read The Dark Half. So. Okay, but yeah, this, it was pretty good. I, mean, I would really like to know, really actually, what other people think of it. But. I am reading well, like all these books. I'm reading the, the Dreadful T Dreadful Tales, an anthology by Richard Layman, and I wanted to I guess, just talk about this one story he has called A Good Deed. And that one, that's another one. I was like, wow, what the hell is going on in this? It's just I don't, Layman just thinks of this like simple but so far to left field crazy ideas. So I had these two guys. They're like teenagers. And they, they, he even one of them I can't remember their names but one of them says you know they're good kids they're like Eagle Scouts and and uh, they get good grades they don't you know they're not bad kids so they convince one of their dads to let them take a jeep and just drive across like California like hiking and camping and so they stop because one has to piss and he goes far into the woods and he sees a girl in a cage and she's asleep and he tells his friend like he's like dude there's a girl in a cage in the woods so they go check it out and they're like trying to wake her up and and I, I thought I was like, she's probably like drugged or something's wrong with her. she's probably drugged uh, I thought and like they're trying to wake her up and they bang on the cage and finally like one reaches in like the whole time I was like what if like she's in here for a reason what if she's like a vampire or a werewolf or something and I was like what if she is what if she is like a werewolf or a vampire that's scary I, I just I don't know why but it was scary but then who put her in the cage like so they're talking about that and finally Finally, she wakes up. She doesn't know how she got there. She does feel drugged. So yeah, they, they, someone drugged her. They put her in this cage. And like one, the main kid, there's only three people, but like I can't remember his name. He's the one telling the story. He's like, we gotta get a letter out. So they have like a hatchet and like a crowbar, and they're trying to, to oh, like just uh, brute strength get the lock off of the cage. And the girl's like, "Come on, you idiot! Hurry up!" And like. And then she calls him like a moron, and then the guy like he gets like, hey, he's uh, let's just leave her, you know? She's called like the, his other friends like she called you a moron or a retard, and he's like, you're right, you know, we should just leave her. But he kind of like he's just trying to scare her, but then he's like, as they're walking away, he's oh, we should just leave her, and then she's like, don't leave me here, and then she takes her shirt off and like shows him her tits, and they like run back and and uh, then like. His friends like take your pants off. Like, she has shorts on. Like, take your shorts off. Or not, you're not getting out of here. And I was like, man. 
and his, his, the main guy is like, he knows it's not right, but he's like, yeah, take your, take your shorts off. And she takes her shorts off, and they're all spread your legs. And I was like, man, these, these are, they said they're good kids, but they're not good kids. And then they're like, come here so we can touch you, and then we'll let you out. And she's like, you're not getting anything unless you let me out. So they start bashing the lock and they finally get it open. And the friend, he just runs in there and he like, grabs her and he slams her up against the, I guess it's a big, kind of a big cage. And he slams her up against the cage and he throws her out. When he throws her out, she hits her head on the top of the cage and she falls down and like, the, the main dude, he then he like, comes back to his senses after seeing her get hurt. And his friend is just ready to rape her. And the kid, main kid, he jumps in front of uh, his friend, and he's like, you're not doing it. And then his friend pulls out a knife on him, and he's like, I'll just go fucking through you, man. And he's like, get out of the way. And he's like, you have to kill me. He's like, you're going to have to kill me. He's like, I'm not letting you do this. And then the guy, like, he comes to his senses, and he's like, he's like, whoa, man, I can't believe I did that. And he's like, let's just leave. You know, she's out. We'll leave. And, like, they leave her, like, a chocolate bar and a canteen. I was like, that one like had me like sweating. I was like, oh my god, what are they gonna do? And then I was thinking, what would I do? What would you do if you found a girl, and, like a hot chick, in the woods in a cage? You'd think you just want to let her out and help her, right? I was like, man, I hope, <laughs> I hope I'd be like the good guy and not like a sleaze bag like, like these kids are gonna be. Uh, so and that was like a 22, 25 page story, and it was so good. And then they don't really dwell on it, but like, what if like the people that put her here, they're watching us right now. Who are they? What kind of people would do this? <coughs> oh. So that was good, you know. Fine. It was like made me question, you know, what I would do. It was scary. It was exciting. It was nasty. And I was a like, layman. He's just a good writer. This makes me think about all these books. And movies. It's way better than any movie I've seen lately. Like, I've been watching all these movies and they have no imagination whatsoever. Um, okay. So, Dead Zone, it was good. If you like King, it's almost like mandatory reading. I have Thinner, I haven't read it. I guess I said that. Maybe that one's better since it's a Bachman book. But yeah, if you're like a diehard King fan or you wanna like them and you haven't read it, I would say go ahead and read it. Um, it's better than a lot of the garbage I've read lately. Okay, bye.